And even in that sharing circle, I feel like that is literally as important as the actual painting that's happening because people are connecting in a way that happens so rarely in this world. I mean, we just don't sit and talk and, and go deep very often. What your challenges are in life or what the things are that you find to help you are things that overlap with people that seem very, very different. And you start to realize that we are all so flippin' connected. We are, we are in this shared experience together. Andrea Sauer is a highly acclaimed artist. Her work is dedicated to images and teachings that inspire healing and transformation. Stay tuned as she reveals how to connect with yourself and to others in a way that will allow for better self-revelation and empowerment. This is Karma Hub, exploring non-traditional healing, wellness, and the practitioners that offer it. My dad said to me, he's like, you should do something you love. You, you, you're going to be working for the rest of your life. Pick something mm. that feels good to get up in the morning and go do. So yeah. I went off to Maryland Institute of Art. Um, I started graphic design, illustration, thought that that's okay. what I was going to do because that was a way to make a living. Right. Got into it right. right when computers started to become so integrated into that field. And I hated it. And luckily, I had a graphic design teacher, Ken Kraftcheck, that said to me, this isn't your thing, like switch, what is it that you love? And I was like, I really like to paint. So um, I switched to painting and then I stayed and got my master's in art education. I'd always worked with kids in summer camps and I had babysat and that felt very comfortable for me and something that I really enjoyed. And then, you know, not only did I love the kids, but I really enjoyed showing people how to begin to be able to explore what they were thinking and feeling and put that down on paper. Right. Um, and so I taught in the public school system for 20 years in Howard County and then out in California. And then I came back, was in Howard County and then in Harford County at Falston High School for the last eight years. And um, I really loved that. I loved, um, I, I don't know, it's funny, you know, sometimes you'll run into people that'll say, how did you teach high school? Like, oh my God, that must have been so scary. And I'm like, you, like, how much time have you spent with a high schooler? Because they literally are just these glorious beings that have all of this that they want to put out there. Okay. And it's, it's, it's hard being a high schooler and not necessarily having the autonomy to live um, maybe specifically the way you want. You're not really controlling much at that point in your life. You're kind of at the mercy of whatever kind of household you're growing up in and whatever the influences are at that time. Um, and I felt like the art room was one of those places where kids came in and you actually got to, to like listen to what were their interests and what were the things that, that light them up. And then being mm -hmm. able to give them the skills to um, put that into some visual format. When did you really get nice. the feeling or realization that this could be a very healing practice, mm -hmm. a, a therapy of sorts? Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking was about that. Was that in high school? Or? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about as I was teaching, I knew that it was healing, um, but that practice has deepened so much into realizing that, you know, it is... It's, it's awesome to be able to teach people to paint realistically and have those skills to be able to render something beautifully and put it down. But there is, like, I love teaching that way. And now also I love teaching the way that I am now where I would think it's even more therapeutic because you're going deeper with that person in a way to think about maybe some of the things that not only light them up, but some of the obstacles that they've had in their life and also processing if there's gifts that have come from the obstacles that they've been through. And so how is that revealed in a, in a painting? Um, so in the classes, I, I come up with prompts to try and get people to think about using visual imagery that will allow them to create symbols for things perhaps that they have been through. So mm -hmm. for instance, um, 
when I teach my medicine painting classes, I really think about what season we're in. That's another thing that I'm really starting to pay more attention to is, you know, when we're in winter time, our bodies really need to slow down much like trees and nature. We, I mean, that is what we are, right? So it's like, it makes sense. And if we, I think our society has kind of wandered a path where we've gotten away from paying attention to what's happening outside in nature. Um, and so when I'm in the medicine painting class by thinking about what season we're in, if it's spring, what are we trying to nurture? What are we trying to grow? What are we trying to bring forth in winter time? What is it that we need to really protect um, that we know are things that hold us and are resources for us? Um, and and then saying like perhaps you might visualize that as seeds like in the springtime what does that look like or what does it look like to think about in winter time um, creating maybe a landscape that is more indicative of what appears to be barren right but then also looking at what are the practices that keep our internal landscape really lit up and and held in that time frame so and, and in what way is that like therapeutic i think that everyone i know i do um have things that i come across in my life that are very nurturing or are things that really hold me at certain times and then you tend to get busy in life and you wander away from those practices. Or sometimes in the classes, it might be that someone has never experienced perhaps a particular practice. That any, it could be that those practices might be even pulling an oracle card when you're first coming into class and realizing that there are synchronicities that come up in life and that if you pay attention and you're open to those synchronicities, perhaps that's something that makes you feel more held throughout your life if you're paying attention to that. So that might be something that is new in class, if that makes that sense. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 So does this have a way of kind of um, tapping into the subconscious and revealing information that you may not even really even know consciously? Yeah, I would say so. I feel like my belief is that things happen for a reason. So part of the beauty of those classes, the medicine painting classes, is that when we come in and we meet, the first part of the class is um, checking in. What we do is called a check-in. And people will kind of say where they're at in that moment, whether they're on a scale of one to 10, one being really, really low, worst day ever, 10 being you know, the best day ever, and really, kind of thinking about where are you in this day and then asking a simple question like um, what is something that you're grateful for this week or what is a practice that you do to bring yourself back to a place of centered when you're really feeling flustered or triggered and even in that sharing circle i feel like that is literally as important as the actual painting that's happening because people are connecting in a way that happens so rarely right. in, in this world. I mean, we just don't sit and talk and, and go deep very often, you know? So you have a quote on your website, yeah. and I love it. Art, enable, art enables us to find ourselves and to lose ourselves at the same time. For whatever reason, that quote really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love to do is um, I run retreats and I, I love that space because those retreats are based on not only checking in with people and having that time to connect in a really deep way to talk about what people are celebrating at this, at this particular juncture in their life and also what are some of the challenges. Um, because it's always both, right? It's always there's, you know, multiple things that are happening that are really awesome and lovely if you take the time to pay attention to all the things that we have to be grateful for. And then also everyone I know is dealing with, with big, big things, right? And so the retreats are really nice spaces to, to kind of move into that. And then they are always guided by um, creating some kind of art. And, and for me, that 
the retreats have become more about not worrying about creating some beautiful, gorgeous piece of art, which inevitably happens. I mean, everyone walks out with something that's stunning. Um, but also that the process and that creative process is sort of what you're talking about with being able to lose yourself in that moment where you are not thinking maybe of the laundry list of all the things that you're trying to produce, create, or or stay on top of, you know, laundry going in the, you know, and what's for dinner and all of those kinds of things. You're really moving into a space where you're opening yourself up to, I think, being present in that very moment, like mm -hmm. really being present in that moment and just trusting and knowing that whatever is supposed to come forth is exactly what's going to come forth. So, what and- What have some of your like larger challenges been that have uh, gotten some of the largest insights, the, the, the largest amount of growth from? Yeah, probably the most uncomfortable times have been times where I've done the most growth. Right. Um, I guess last year uh, I had a stroke um, while I was driving on wow. Route 24 up here in Bel Air. Wow. And, um, and from that stroke was taken to the hospital and realized that I had a hole in my heart, which is wh why a blood clot went to my brain. And then also um, the oh. following day they came in and gave me um, the awesome news that I had three brain aneurysms, two on the right and one on the left. I think every time you go through something big like that, it, it opens up another level of empathy for people. It's like you, you just don't know until you you know, like it's just one thing after another and life happens and you're like, oh, like now I can understand all of these people who have been in my life that have gone through something that is mm. really scary and and either is an, an end of life scenario or, or, or a potential end of life scenario and, and figuring out what are the things that are critically important to you? Um, hmm. Being brave enough to make the changes that need to be made because you get a second chance, you know, for me. And, um, and then being able to really listen to people's stories. I don't think I was always a very good listener. I think I... Um, I, to be able to really get still and like hear and and move into a place where you're really feeling what someone else is going through and I don't know yeah wow. yeah no, I think that's yeah that's an excellent answer thanks wow. also on your website Andrea learned how trauma impacts the body somatically mm -hmm. and in different ways to move and release the trauma from the mm -hmm. body tissue Mm -hmm. Can you speak on that a little bit? A little bit, yeah. I'm so, so much of a student in so many of these realms, whether it's learning more about nature or the somatic practices, but just understanding, um, you know, both how things like tapping, how EMDR uh, therapy, um, how these practices work for instead of storing trauma in your limbic system, how you can use movement to change your energy and kind of release that. So even um, when people come to do my medicine painting classes, I've really started to incorporate so many different chunks of things that, um, that I'm learning, you know, right now, like even the, t like how to do, you know, tapping to, to be able to kind of move. So you, you use some of these other methods. I do. I incorporate to... everything I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. I'm, I'm yep. getting a clearer picture. Yep. So, um, whether it's coming in and leading people through a meditation to ground before we start painting, right. whether it is anointing yourself so that you're really thinking about, you know, what is it that you are, um, what is it that you, what is your intention? Like really thinking about intention as you begin your painting, what, you know, is it your intention to release um, a particular trauma that has happened? Um, 
um, even using movement and teaching people how to like, you know, I'm not going to stand up, but like standing up and like, <laughs> yeah, doing body movement to, to release okay. energetically what's going okay. on in that moment is so all you bring together a number of different methods at your uh, workshops, programs, um, retreats. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And oftentimes at the retreats, you uh, work with other therapists. Is that I do. right? In, yeah. Okay. Um, Sue Stockman. Do they, do they focus on different areas or are they also about painting or again, it's just like kind of a, yeah. a, a melding of many different methodologies? We have definitely brought into the retreats people that are really gifted tai, like in Tai Chi and, and um, yoga um, and different different practices. Mostly, however, I work with a woman named Sue Stockman and we have similar backgrounds. She is mm. an amazing artist, um, jeweler, you know, mosaics, mm. so many different modalities, so many different media. She really understands how trauma is stored in the body and we both work together in Talbot County um, through social services um, with with teens that have been referred there, um, oh, okay. mostly with sexually abused teens. Wow. Okay. Um, and, and using that that practice of sharing um, and the act of listening and then moving into an art piece that allows them to move into that place where they can find themselves and lose themselves. So what brings you happiness? Hmm. As I continue to learn things, I just am so excited when I'm out in nature. That's one of the things that really lights me up. And, and shamanism and the study of sham, shamanism and really understanding how to have more of a res, like reciprocity with the earth is really important to me. And it keeps integrating further and further into the retreats that I offer, into the classes that I offer, and into my own artwork that I show in galleries um, and commissions I do. And um, I am by no means an expert. So as we were sitting here and I was noticing uh, this plant, I have, you know, the app on my phone and I was looking on plant.net and it's Indian pokeweed. And I was hmm. thinking, well, what does this do? So I looked up medicinally what it does and it helps cure inflammation and cancer. And it's like, we've gotten so far, I feel, from where we sometimes understand how many gifts, like there's just the, the complexity of the relationships in nature mm. that it's, it's always amazing to me. Um, and I was going to point out, so even in the corner down here of the painting where this beaver is, I ended up printing some um, columbine down into the corner. And in the retreats that I offer too, just really becoming more aware of what I am integrating into the artistic practice so that we are blessing the water that we are using. We are using water that is coming from the Chesapeake Bay when we're doing the retreats on the Chesapeake Bay, um, really paying attention to what the natural elements are and giving thanks for how we are supported in every single way that we need to be through nature. Um, and, I, and I find that that is something that just is becoming more and more important in what I'm incorporating. And that's part of what my my medicine painting class is about is too is the stories that we tell ourselves sometimes in life might have served us in that moment mm -hmm. but they might not serve us now it might be something that that we need can to you, let go of can you share with us maybe some success stories that you've had with you know participants that come in and, mm -hmm. and maybe they found themselves unknowingly express some past mm -hmm. trauma or revealing some issues that now they're aware of mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I think, well, a couple things come up for me when you say that. I think in, in these spaces, um, the, the talking piece of it and the sharing piece is also instrumental um, because everyone that's coming into these spaces, there's such a wide variety of people. I have 15 and 16 year old teens, and then I may have someone, I had a lady, uh, an artist that came down, um, from Vermont who was 80 and came mm. down on, actually it was our 81st birthday. And the, the beauty is when you deeply listen to each other, that our experiences are, there's so many overlaps and there's so many ways that what you're 
challenges are in life or what the things are that you find to help you are things that overlap with people that seem very, very different. And you start to realize that we are all so flippin' connected. We are, we are in this shared experience together. Um, and I think that knowing that and feeling that in such an intense way is a way not to feel isolated or to feel hopeless or lonely also. I think okay. that's a huge piece of what happens um, in the classes and the retreats. And then in terms of the art, um, inevitably people will be creating and they're, they're finding themselves, losing themselves in this practice of whatever it is we're doing. Last time it was silk painting, it's been mosaics, um, it, you know, painting on canvas, whatever. And, um, and they feel like what they're putting on the canvas is about one thing. And then we will take a pause and step back and certain imagery will reveal itself and inevitably um, synchronicities will come up and they'll say, oh, wow, I'm seeing this in here and that makes sense to me because right now I am kind of having this struggle, but this sort of makes sense. I'm, I'm you know, this has now appeared to me or maybe I need to pay attention to this more. So... Wow. Yeah, I think the imagery itself also becomes revealed as they're working too. If you were to summarize what it is you do, what, what's, the, what's your broad stroke? I think my hope is that I am creating uh, spaces for people to come in and connect with one another, um, but also have time and space and... Um, permission to play. And I think that's mm. critical too, because I don't think we also allow ourselves a lot of times not to have some product in mind. And I think that play is critical to reminding us to like, why we're even here in the first place. Like right. we are creative beings and it's important to, to have joy. Uh, we all are going to have things that are challenging and difficult, but but creating practices where we have time to um, express ourselves, connect, and, and laugh. I mean, otherwise, what's the point? <laughs>